Hi there, my name is Stefan Vogel and I've just created a free stereoscopic rig for Cinema 4D. So let's just have a look at it. Um, I'll blend out my test scene for that. And as you can see, the setup contains four cameras, the center cam, which is colored white, left and right cam, which you can also see here, left cam, right cam, and the anaglyph preview, which is a camera pointing backwards and looking to a plane, but more to that later. All right, you have a target. Um, let's just blend in the scene again, with which you can choose where your uh, zero plane is, and near and far plane gets automatically adjusted. So this is pretty helpful. Everything that is between zero and near plane gets out of the screen, and everything that is between zero and far plane is behind the screen. Uh, the near plane is calculated by dividing the distance between camera and object by three and placing the near plane into the into the first third of this plane. Other setups are uh, dividing this distance by two and placing the near plane only in the middle, but I think this will get better results. Uh, so it's possible to, to place objects also here, but I recommend to keep everything here. So as you are moving the target, you can see these two cameras, the left and right cam, also get adjusted automatically. Uh, when you're clicking on the stereoscopic rig and user data, you, you can turn this off or on. And you can change the automation distance to 60, or to 20, and this is always the distance between camera and object here and object um, divided by 20, by 30, and which results into the distance between the cameras. But if you want to animate one of these values, you can also turn this automation off and adjust the interaction with this value. And um, when you're moving the camera target, the left and right camera is not affected. All right, you can rotate the camera by clicking on SV Stereo Rig and rotate everything. You can also roll and nothing gets destroyed. And as you can see, this is an off-axis setup. The left and right camera are having the same screen plane, but I've also concluded a parallel and towed-in setup if you're working for post-production and have to recreate a live-action camera. So if you want to recreate a parallel setup, uh, let's just put in a good value in here. Uh, if you want to create a parallel setup, you just have to hit this button and you see the cameras are parallel and contrary to off-axis. If you're using the parallel setup, I've included a little calculator based on formulas by Louis Marcoux. And um, if you want to have a horizontal resolution by 720 pixels, your left and right camera should have a resolution by 750.667, so 751, to crop it afterwards. So this calculator shows you which resolution your left and right view in width should have to get uh, 720 pixels after all the cropping, after cropping this and this areas out. When rendering a wider picture, your field of view also differs. So um, I've also calculated a field of view calculator. So your left and right camera will, after the cropping, have the same field of view as your center camera. So the center camera has currently uh, 42.76, let's just turn this into a good value, like 46. Um, so the center camera has a field of view of 46, so the field of view for the left and right camera should be 47.609. By pushing this button, the field of view automatically gets uh, adjusted to left and right camera. As you see, Left and right camera have the, have the same field of view as the center cam, and left and right camera have a bigger field of view. You can also convert this whole setup into a towed-in setup if you're in need of that.
But first off, you have to uncheck the field of view calculation, otherwise you're getting strange results. So by hitting this, I'm converting this into a toad in setup. And as you can see, the image planes are not matching exactly what's typical for a toad in setup. So you have these three setups. When nothing down here is checked, you have got the off-axis setup, which is quite nice because there's no cropping needed and no field of view calculation and everything's fine in 3D. And with this button you have a parallel setup with field of view calculation. And when you're uh, checking parallel setup and toad in setup, you will have a toad in setup. When you're doing this, everything gets destroyed. And when you're doing this, no, this, everything is worse. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, then let's look at the anaglyph preview. For that, I will blend in my test scene. Just look if everything is all right. Uh, you see, the target isn't OK. So this mm, should work. And as I mentioned before, the anaglyph preview is just this camera looking at a plane. And this plane has a special shader uh, that, that takes the view of the left and the right camera and multiplies it like an anaglyph image. This is a pretty new shader, so you'll need uh, release 11.5 and MoGraph, I suppose, because um, it's a MoGraph camera shader. This feature is also included in the free stereoscopic rig by More3D, but I've added something on top. More3D only had a black and white anaglyph. Uh, you just For anaglyph preview, just select this camera in the viewport and render it. Uh, More3D only had a black and white anaglyph, and which also was stretched in, in height. And I've added a colored, colored anaglyph, which will hurt pretty bad because I've used red in this scene, and also an optimized anaglyph shader, which will look pretty nice in stereo. So it depends on which anaglyph preview you want, you're putting a different shader on your anaglyph preview plane. I also want to include some shaders for polarized filters or a stacked image preview, so this is coming next. All right, and um, right now, this is a free camera setup. So if you're rot rotating the setup, um, yeah, it's, it's a free camera setup. So you don't have any target. You have to rotate the whole camera. But you can build a target, set target camera quite easily by creating two nulls and putting your stereo rig in the first null. Uh, I'll just call this stereo base. And this will, our, will be our new target. And you're giving the stereo base a Cinema 4D tag called target. Put in your new target right here. And well, you should also move your target somewhere. So now you have a nice target camera. But you also have to adjust um, your depth separately. But with a little use of Expresso, you'll also fix that if you really need a target camera. So have fun with my rig, and good luck for good stereo. At the end, I just want to show you my sources and also give thanks to the people who gave me the knowledge to build this rig. So first off, a good friend of mine, David Shelton, who has built a great stereo rig for 3D Studio Max that is far more advanced than my rig. He does all kind of crazy stuff in stereo. It's really amazing work. He also created a filter for After Effects that gives you great anaglyph, so you should really check out his site. After that, thanks to Louis Marcoux for always sharing his formulas. He gives also a good introduction to stereo on his site, so check it out. And of course, thanks to More3D for creating the invasion contest and not hiding the code on their rig, so I could steal the anaglyph preview. Many thanks for sharing. There are also many other links on this site, so it's a good knowledge base for you. And you should also visit my site, of course, for more tutorials on stereoscopy. Currently, I'm working on some video tutorials about stereo, so stay tuned.